a concept that has been somewhat tricky and elusive for me uh, during my oil painting journey so far has been the concept of extremely expressive eyes in portraits. So this is something that's fascinated me because I've found eyes to be pretty tricky. So uh, I've kind of settled into a, a painting routine with a lot of these portraits, especially the head and shoulders ones. So like I'll start with a, a loose, thin outline to get the rough structures of the face. I'll use a, a vertical and horizontal cross uh, lines to kind of roughly position features like the eyes, nose, and mouth. And then I'll start blocking in little zones of detail. And early, when I first started painting, I would try to jump into some of the details too quickly. And by that, I mean the details of the eyes and some of the finer features. Just instinctively, I wanted to do those first because they're so interesting. And I think often when I drew with pencil, that's what I would go to first. So that was a natural reaction for me. But I realized after painting that it is beneficial and useful to start broad, start with bigger shapes and rougher little areas of matching color values and hues and work your way gradually to those finer details, getting those details closer to the end of the painting. And I found that this actually helps quite a lot with those expressive eyes that I, I mentioned that, that have been kind of elusive for me. So lately, a lot of the paintings that I've done I, have been figure studies. I've been trying to work on my limb positioning and proportion and try to get better at those. So that's been a point of emphasis. But the problem with those figure studies, considering the kind of smaller paper that I tend to use, which is often uh, like the paper on screen right now is 12 inches by nine inches. Um, the other size that I often use is a 12 inch by 12 inch paper, but I do this because of storage concerns, but it makes it hard when I do those figure studies sometimes to actually get facial details in like the one on screen. So these head and shoulders portraits are a little easier to show some of that detail in the final result. So that's kind of nice getting to these. As I mentioned, working, uh, working broad and gradually getting to those details, that is what I'm doing here. And, and it kind of allows you to, to work your way to those finer features. Another thing that I've found with these is subtlety is the name of the game. Um, I think a natural reaction for me too, coming from pencil, is I want that finer point of the pencil to show me the detail. I want to explicitly show what I'm seeing as lines. But with painting, that's really not what you want to do. Uh, sometimes you need to suggest something with a small shift in color or a small shift in lightness or darkness, the value of the color. So subtlety is not a strong suit for me. So that, that has taken some practice to get used to that concept. And with the eyes, one of the things that I had to learn, initially I wanted to use a lot of white, but there's not a ton of white in the eyes. It's actually, the white is just gonna be the light reflection sometimes, and it's gonna be a lot of gray. There's gonna be some pink in there sometimes. Um, you have to, I found that it kind of helps to get a really dark gray and start on the outer edges of the eye and work your way to a gradually a lighter gray, really never getting to just a true white, again, unless it's a light reflection. So that took some time to get used to because again, it was against my natural instincts, but um, I found that that kind of subtlety is, has helped me along as I try to try to get better at these expressive eyes. And, you know, as I mentioned, I've done a lot of figure studies lately, so this is something that I haven't gotten to practice too much in probably the last month or so, but I do want to get more to it. So I've got this one and I've got another one coming after it that really I'm working on the eyes and trying to trying to practice that skill. Because after all, practicing is kind of the the whole point of some of these things. You find pieces that you want to work on and dive in and try to get better at them through repetition. That's kind of uh, 
I think, the best path forward for me on a lot of this stuff. But those are my thoughts on painting expressive eyes and trying to get better at that skill. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you for the next one.